YouTube, hey there, Casey Dim at TaxSellAcademy.com. Thank you so much for joining me as we record an episode for the Tax Sell Podcast. If you enjoy listening to the podcast, make sure you check us out at TaxSellPodcast.com. Download us on your favorite podcasting platform and take us on the go. There's a link down below in the description. Let's go ahead and switch on over to the audio portion right now. Welcome to the Tax Sell Podcast, where tax sell investing is made easy. My name is Casey Dimon. I'm a tax sell veteran. I'm the author of the Tax Sell Playbook, founder of the Tax Sell Academy. I'm the leading tax sell expert and trainer, and I am your host right here on the Tax Sell Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me on today's podcast. This podcast is provided completely free to help teach you about investing in tax faulted real estate and is made possible through the Tax Sell Academy. If you're looking to learn about investing in tax faulted real estate in a comprehensive, step-by-step, detailed manner, then head to TaxLawAcademy.com and click on Join. Again, that's TaxLawAcademy.com and click on Join. There's a link down below in the show notes. Today, we're talking about a subject that many people might not understand completely. That is, until they get started in the tax sell investing business. The title of this episode is Tax Sell Investing Isn't Pretty. Tax sell investing is a subcategory of real estate investing. It's an extremely lucrative subcategory, but investing in tax defaulted real estate is far different than investing in any other type of real estate. TV shows like Flip This House, Fixer Upper, Flipper Flop, and about a other thousand different shows with similar titles, while possibly intriguing in some ways, are far from reality in many situations. And while they don't attempt to portray the properties that they're flipping as tax sale properties, the situations on these shows are far removed from the tax sale business. Then we add in social media, where we have investors who drive from job site to job site in a $300,000 Lamborghini. And when they want to perform a little bit of extra work, they sit poolside on their laptop looking at listings surrounded by women in bikinis, supposedly making hundreds of millions of dollars flipping these low-end homes. These things often give beginners the perception that you have to have your hair done, your nails painted, wearing $500 shoes and picking out Italian imported granite if you plan on succeeding in this business. Unfortunately, when we combine all this, we get a false sense of reality. Our expectations are not aligned with the real world. While I'm not knocking any of that stuff, it's important to have realistic expectations and to have an understanding of what you're getting yourself into. Too often, I hear from investors that tell me the properties, in quote, aren't in very good condition, or there just aren't any homes in this area, or they're all in that area. They come up with a whole bunch of crazy reasons why they're not succeeding, and many seem to come from their perception of this business ahead of time. One thing I want you to understand right off the bat is that you must understand what you're going into These are properties that are tax defaulted. If it's at a tax sale auction, it's a tax defaulted piece of real estate. That means the owner did not pay the taxes on it. These are not multi-million dollar mansions in your exclusive country club that you'll be buying. These are properties where the owner didn't want to or just couldn't pay the taxes. Now, obviously, guys, there are some incredible, incredible properties, and there'll be some that just shock you. I've seen some in exclusive country clubs, but by and large, these properties that are offered at tax sale auctions are not going to be in great areas, and they're not going to be in great condition. And that, that is perfectly okay with me. I remember the first time that I took a friend to drive by some properties while we're doing some research, and I think he was expecting that, you know, I was going to buy these properties, maybe mow the yard, do some pressure washing, flip it, and make a whole bunch of money. I really don't know what he was expecting. We drove by the very first property, and it was kind of run down. He said, wait, you're going to buy that thing? Yes, I sure was. And if everything turned out okay, that thing represented about a $15,000 profit to me. Eventually, of course, he understood that, he came to learn that, and he actually became an investor himself. The last thing I want to happen is for your perception of this business to be wrong. I don't want you to expect something and then quit entirely when it doesn't happen that way. Because when this happens, you're going to exit the business soon after getting into it. You will quickly discover that what you see on TV, what you see on social media, that is not tax sale investing in most situations. My entire academy teaches off of my almost 17 years of experience in this business. 
showing you the reality of tax sale investing and how you can be successful. I'm not the type that's going to sit here and blow smoke and tell you that you're going to be buying mansions for pennies. That's just not happening. Let's look at five points when it comes to the large percentage of tax sale properties and how we can compare them to conventional real estate investing. Now, not all these are going to apply in every single situation, but I want you to have all these in the back of your mind. Number one, a common theme amongst tax sell properties is deferred maintenance. Many of these properties, actually most of these properties, have actually had zero maintenance in many, many years. And in fact, many properties have been vacant for a number of years. And the worst thing that you can do to a house is allow it to sit unused and vacant for two, three, four years. The end result is usually going to be some mold, maybe some leaks, mechanicals that are missing or just don't function, and lots of other fun little surprises. Tax sale properties won't come with those nifty little home warranties. So be prepared to spend a few bucks repairing or replacing stuff if your goal is going to be a remodel and flip. Deferred maintenance scares off many beginners. Overcome it understand it, and you're going to have a leg up. Number two, cleanliness. When somebody loses their home to tax foreclosure, they usually won't vacuum the carpets for you, and they're not going to sweep off their front porch on their way out. Cleaning it so that you're not inconvenienced is going to be the last thing on their mind. Likewise, while some banks might take the time to clean out their rios, the county isn't going to care if the former owner left their trash in there. The county is not going to step in and say, hey, let's get all that trash out for our nice little tax sale investor. They do not care. And by trash, it could be just about anything. I've seen homes that have had the power shut off with refrigerators full of food that sat that way for a year or two. Pro tip here, don't ever open the refrigerator or the freezer door, regardless of how curious you are. I've also seen hoarders who have walked out and leave all their goodies for us to deal with as tax investors. I've even seen dead animal carcasses before. Solution, flip it before you clean it. Wear a mask or just hire somebody else to do it for you. Number three, damage. Tax sale properties are frequently damaged in some way or another. A common problem that I see are broken windows and or broken or missing doors. And you can usually see these things when you do your drive-by. And of course, if it concerns you, make sure you take note of that. Other less obvious type issues are going to include your damaged pipes in the wall, maybe with some leaking water, or maybe even some electrical wires that have been pulled and scrapped. There's also interior wall damage that happens. Kitchen damage is also another one that is very common, and a lot of times what you'll see is the entire kitchen, cabinets and all, are going to be missing. Most of these issues can be fixed fairly easy during the remodel. It becomes a little bit more difficult when a tree has fallen right through the center of the house, when there's foundation issues that are obvious, or when a wall is buckling. All in all, the expensive stuff can usually be avoided with proper due diligence. Number four, another one are the legal type issues. Most real estate investments, like your bank owned properties, are gonna come with a clean title, title insurance, no liens, no issues, or really anything else that are really concerning to most people besides perhaps the condition of that property. Tax sale properties usually come with lots of fun stuff like clouded titles that can put a lot of people off. Newsflash, it's not that big of a deal once you know how to deal with it, but you should definitely let your competition continue to blow it way out of proportion. In addition to that, there could also be code enforcement liens or citations that relate to the condition of that property. And all of this is going to scare off your competition. Learn how to push past it, which is very easy, and then press forward. Number five, another difference is that tax law investing can actually be more paperwork than anything else in some situations depending on your strategy. I've bought and I've sold properties before without leaving my desk. I literally spent more time preparing and filing paperwork than anything else. And this is usually much different than conventional real estate investing. In many conventional real estate transactions, you've got third parties that do all this for you. You have the attorney, the title company, the realtor, all these people that are preparing this paperwork. And they, of course, get all their little fees. But if you strategize in certain ways as a tax sell investor, for many of my properties, I'll buy them, market them, sell them, prepare all the paperwork, send it out, get a check, and move on to the next property. And I'm usually able to do this in many situations without leaving this desk right here. And you better believe that I am more than happy to sit in this chair right here for a couple of hours per transaction to make a few thousand dollars 
every single time. More than happy. Obviously, there are so many more differences amongst conventional real estate investing and tax investing, but these are some of the common ones that shock a lot of people. What I really want you to realize with today's episode is that tax law investing is different and it isn't as glamorous as many people might think. This isn't your typical real estate transaction or your typical real estate flip. There are so many aspects that differ from the conventional type of real estate and there are so many different avenues and strategies that we can use as tax law investors that makes it an absolutely incredible business. And in fact, tax law investing is often not pretty at all. It's not the granite countertops. It's not the fancy open houses. But as you probably know by now, it can be very, very lucrative with the right approach. That's it for today, guys. If you're interested in leveraging our years and years of experience investing ourselves and also training many other students just like you how to see tax sell success, head on over to taxsellacademy.com and click on join and become a member of the academy. We'll show you the step-by-step process that we have utilized as well as our students. Again, that's taxlawacademy.com and click on join. Thank you so much for joining us on today's episode. And as always, guys, these episodes are completely free, of course, in exchange. We appreciate you taking just a few seconds out of your day to leave a five-star rating and some positive feedback for us. We read and we notice each and every single one of them, and we are so thankful for those who have done so already. Take care, guys, and make it a successful day. See ya.